Now, what is this? As I drive along a mountain highway, an unusual road-killed animal catches my eye. If this is what I think it is, this is a creature that is rare not only in these northern Rockies, but throughout the country. It's a nursing mother fisher. But where are the babies? Maybe the mother's final tracks will lead me back to the den. nothing quite as cute and cuddly as a baby. These orphan fishers are no exception, but if these babies are to survive, it looks like it will be up to me and my family to raise them. It's not the ideal way for a wild baby to grow up. The real parents are always best. Wild babies are a joy whether we're raising them or just observing them. Join me as we enjoy these tender times.
springtime in the Rocky Mountains. The snow melts, flowers bloom, birds sing, and every form of life is renewed. When a female bighorn sheep is ready to give birth, she leaves the herd and finds a secluded narrow ledge. Here she brings her baby into the world. Weak and wobbly at first, the lamb will soon grow strong and healthy on its mother's milk. When the lamb is about one week old, the ewe takes it back to the other sheep. The ewes and their lambs band together for mutual protection. While some sleep or graze, others keep watch for predators. But the lambs are young and know nothing of these dangers and couldn't care less. They are perfectly happy to spend these warm early summer days romping and playing. This play is for fun, but it's also practice for more serious matters. One of the most inquisitive and playful of all animals is the grizzly bear. These baby bears are closely guarded by their cautious mother. She has her paws full, keeping track of the playful youngsters. It used to be widely believed that animal play was just so the babies could learn how to function as adults. Now we think that bears play for the same reason our own children do, because it feels good. Watching her cubs is not enough. She must cut playtime short to teach them a valuable hunting lesson. At the annual salmon run in Alaska, this mother catches a fish and introduces it to her inexperienced offspring. She continues to pull out fish, but her cubs want nothing to do with them. Convincing her cubs that an enormous thrashing salmon can be eaten is quite a job for the mother bear. It will take time and patience to teach her cubs that this scary, floppy thing is really food. Time and patience are what most mothers have for their offspring. This stream crossing lesson is putting a raccoon's motherly patience to the test. She tries to encourage her uncertain youngsters across, but is not having much luck convincing her timid babies.
what starts out as a lesson in getting across the stream quickly becomes a swimming lesson. By accident, one of the babies falls into the water and finds the stream a challenge. Now if the mother can just get the other to try. Frustrated, she checks on her first little swimmer, who is now doing fine. The reluctant youngster can hold on no more. It may not be elegant, but the young raccoons now know the water is not so scary. Our western shores are home to an animal that spends so much of its time in the water you would think it a born swimmer, the sea lion. But sea lion pups do not take to the water instinctively. They must be taught to swim. This mother tries to persuade her little one that it would be fun to join the other seals underwater. her coaxing, the pup takes the plunge. On second thought, the unsure youngster is not convinced and scrambles back to the safety of the rocks. But given a few more tries, the young sea lion will soon be swimming gracefully with the others. It is not only the wild parent's job to teach their offspring to be like their own kind, but they must also teach the young to protect themselves from a host of dangers. Even though this white-tailed doe seems calm, she is constantly alert to intruders, whether they pose a real threat or not. She has already taught her fawns how to react to danger. Any strange sound can mean predators are approaching. Yeah, what's that? Looks like something's been rubbing on here. She knows by experience humans are predators. Quietly the doe leads her fawns away. As she's taught them, each one finds its own hiding place. This pile of timber looks pretty dry. A white-tailed mother will sometimes teach her offspring to hide by forcing them down with her nose or forefoot. In this case, the fawn has already learned its lesson. The doe knows that one of her fawns is hiding close by, but where's the other one, and is it safe? As reluctant as she is to leave her fawns, her instinct tells her that she must first protect her own life. Hey, what's this over here? 
She cannot know that the woodsmen mean no harm. Let's go. We don't want to make her nervous. The doe is wise in her caution. The lesson she learned as a fawn and taught her own offspring is that the individual must survive to carry on the species. And like all mammals, when the crisis has passed, the fawns quickly return to the warmth and comfort of their mother. Not all wild animals are raised solely by the mother. One of the exceptions is a predator of the whitetail, the timber wolf. This wild hunter lives in packs and raises its young as a group. Throughout spring, the life of the pack revolves around raising the newcomers. Only one litter is born to the pack each spring. On that litter is lavished all the affection and attention of the adults, even though the litter was born to the male and female leaders of the pack. This pack has seven members. At the top are the leaders, alpha male and alpha female. Down the social ladder, each member has a certain rank which is supported and defined by gestures and postures, submissive and dominant, what we might call body language. By using body language, each wolf establishes and defends its position in the pack. At an early age, play helps to decide their places. Wolves are not born killers. They are, however, born with certain behavior patterns, running, jumping, and stalking that help them learn to survive. One day, this young deer and young wolf may be prey and predator, but for the moment, both youngsters are still innocent and curious, unschooled in their respective roles. Because it is a predator, the pup is naturally more playful than the fawn. Wolves must search for their meals, so they never stop investigating and exploring. The fawn is also inquisitive, but in a more contained way. It does not know what to make of this furry and energetic creature. However, the fawn is not afraid. Its defense reactions are, for the most part, learned. By seeing adult deer run, the fawn too will know to run. Try as it may, the young wolf cannot interest its new acquaintance in a game of hide and seek. Someday they might meet again, but for now, no matter how far they roam, there is no place like home and mother. In the spring, 
polar bears dig out of their dens with their young. They have done their job so far. They have reproduced and survived this harsh Arctic climate. But life is not always so serious. These playful cubs are just getting to know the snowy environment in which they will spend their lives. Sometimes, Big Brother is not much help. In our southern forests, wild hogs roam free. It's spring, and there are young piglets everywhere, some just born. It's not long before I find the newborns. The nest is a cleverly constructed hiding place for the sow's litter. Because they are born nearly hairless, it's also a warm haven for their first week of life. The sow must be nearby, but they're so cute I hate to go. When the sow returns, I quickly leave mother hog to her family duties. As a protective parent, she could be dangerous. Since the 1950s, Wild hogs have been plentiful in the Great Smoky Mountains. These cute little piglets are, by far, the most prolific large animal in America. Aliens to the Kentucky and Carolina forests, they are overrunning the age-old home of the black bear. There are some records of bears killing hogs and some of boars killing bears. But even though the two species do compete for food and living space, 
For the most part, they avoid each other. However, cubs and piglets are not yet aware of these adult facts of life. Babies rejoin mother, who, upwind of the pigs, is unaware of her cub's playmates. For baby animals, friends are everywhere. This bear cub is about to get into some smelly trouble. The youngster still does not know what the business end of a skunk is all about. baby's romp, life continues to be one innocent discovery after another. Sometimes, wild babies learn a lot on their own. These red fox kits will learn all they want to know about snakes while their mother hunts. The kits have disturbed a bull snake sleeping outside their den. This relative of the gopher snake is harmless, but it puts on a terrific act mimicking a rattlesnake as it hisses and vibrates the tip of its tail. It makes believers out of the fox pups, scaring one of them back into the den, which in turn scares its jumpy brother. After a while, the immediate fright subsides and fear becomes just another form of fun a game that will make these pups all the more ready for their next encounter with a snake. After all, the next one might have real rattles on its tail. On the many high ledges of our western mountains resides the mountain goat. This animal lives higher than any other in North America. In late May, the female mountain goat, a nanny, isolates herself from the group to give birth. Only minutes old, this newborn kid enters a dangerous world. Black Bear poses little threat to a healthy kid, 
but it might catch one that has been injured. And these cliffs are just the place from which newborns can fall. The close bond between a nanny and her kid is the basis of the young goat's survival in this harsh alpine environment. When the kid is old enough to travel, they join others. Initial meetings can be somewhat confusing. But soon the young make friends and, urged on by their mothers, play and learn to be at home on the ledges. Goat country is also eagle country. The cliffs create updrafts on which eagles soar and hunt. The bird's strategy is to strike an unsuspecting kid and hurl it to the rocks below. But the nanny is constantly on guard and usually positions herself between her offspring and the cliff's edge. Even so, golden eagles kill more mountain goats than any other single predator. They nest high, where few others venture. Here they care for their young. You would not think it to look at this ball of fuzz, but this down will soon be replaced by feathers. It quickly grows to a fledgling, almost as large as its parents ready to try its wings. Soon it's time for the first real flight. Initially, however, the problem is not flying, but landing. With practice, though, it's soon soaring with ease, one of the most elegant birds in the air.
The severity of the weather in the far north keeps caribou on the move, even during birthing season. Like all animals, these caribou must learn to adapt to the severe Arctic climate at a very early age. Like this newborn, struggling to stand in its icy new world. The mother seems confused as to why this small wet calf does not follow her. Only minutes old, not yet able to stand, the newborn tries in vain. Even though the mother wants to move on, she keeps returning and encouraging her infant. Finally, she seems resigned to waiting for it to gain its balance a poignant reminder of the power of motherly instinct. Not all births perpetuate life. This moose calf died. It's only a matter of time before its scent reaches the keen nose of a grizzly or a wolf. But the cow remains faithfully by its side. For days, she tries in vain to rouse her dead calf. The wild mother's instinct to stand by her young is so strong it compels this arctic fox to protect her litter against the slightest hint of danger. No matter how threatened she may feel, mother will not abandon the kits she has sent into hiding. Finally, the caribou moves on to graze elsewhere and leaves the family in peace. During the birthing season on our western prairies, the animals that raise their young here are accustomed to afternoon thunderstorms. Prairie storms, though blustery, are normally brief. When the storm is over, the prairie comes back to life. 
baby cottontails emerge from their protective nests. In the first few weeks after leaving the nest, the litter mates hang around, using the nest site as a base of operations. Each day they venture farther from home until they are finally independent. Cottontail babies are not the only youngsters out on this warm spring day. My daughter Hannah and son Luke are also enjoying an outing and are intrigued by anything that moves. Hey Dad, look at the baby bunny. Hannah spies this cute cottontail one of the first newborns of the year. Incredibly soft, there are few animals as delightful for children to touch as a bunny. Very careful with it. Let's see, show it to Luke. Luke, look at the bunny. Mm. Baby, that's just a little baby. Don't be afraid. Oh, don't be afraid. Oh, and those little feet. Those little feet are so great. The little claws. You need to learn how to hide better. And nobody gets you. Good luck. Time for this wild baby to go home. grass of a country meadow, a bob white cock has constructed a shallow nest and lined it with grass. Over the course of several weeks, the hen has laid a dozen small white eggs. The hen gently turns the eggs and is careful to keep them close together. A few days before hatching, an unhatched chick makes a tiny pinhole opening in its egg and begins breathing with its lungs. It also starts making an almost inaudible clicking noise, 80 to 150 times per minute. It's theorized that chicks within eggs that are close together can hear each other's clicks, and this stimulates them to break into the world at almost the same moment, a phenomenon called synchronized hatching. Unlike most mammals, these fresh hatchlings, only minutes old, are already physically capable. Even before their down has completely dried, the rambunctious bobwhite babies are investigating their world. Out in the open, the chick's movements do not go unnoticed. Mother quail to the rescue.
even the kestrel's sharp talons are no match for this hen's determination to safeguard her young. birds invest in their offspring, the parental bond is amazingly short-lived. In the avian world, youth passes quickly. Once grown, birds have only their instincts to guide and protect them. It's spring in central Florida, and a female armadillo is searching for a den site. Although she may have as many as 15 burrows scattered throughout the sandy palmetto forest, this one is special, for it will house her next litter of young. With her long, strong claws, she begins in earnest. Before she's done, she will excavate a tunnel that may be 20 feet long leading to a multi-chambered den five feet below ground. An armadillo is not particularly quick or agile, but it is a world-class digger. A most amazing adaptation of this burrowing creature is that, if stressed, the female can delay giving birth for over two and a half years, even though normal gestation is eight to nine months. Born fully developed, with their eyes open, the four little carbon copies have pink leathery shells that will harden with age. Until then, these babies nurse contentedly. Life is good. The opossum is a common nocturnal creature in North America with a unique reproductive system. It is a marsupial. For a mother opossum, labor is not long or difficult. Marsupial young are born while still in an embryonic stage of development. These tiny babies are smaller than honeybees. As many as 20 of them may be born in a few minutes. so helpless, how will they ever reach the safe destination of their mother's pouch? Unlike other mammals which are born attached to an umbilical cord, the young possums are floating free inside her uterus. At this stage, the hind legs are hardly present, but the tiny forelegs are already well developed, complete with claws that aid in reaching the pouch.
By the end of two months, the young have opened their eyes, grown fur, and are about the size of mice. Though still dependent on their mother, they now venture outside the pouch, all of them trying to crowd back in at once if frightened. As they grow older and braver, they begin to ride around on the outside, clinging to their mother's fur. Giving birth is not nearly as easy for this cougar, but a mother knows what to do. Instinctively and immediately, she must free each kitten before it suffocates. The birth sac provides protein until she can hunt again. The stimulation of her tongue cleans the kittens and helps their breathing and circulation in this strange new world. Instinct tells these blind and helpless balls of fur where to look for their first meal. In a week, the kitten's eyes are open and they begin to explore. Meanwhile, the mother has grown restless. She shares her territory with a bobcat that presents no threat to her, but would welcome a meal of cougar kitten while she's off hunting. She senses that her babies have grown old enough to attract unwelcome attention. There is a more secluded cave not far away. One by one, the kittens are moved, carried gently in her powerful jaws. Perhaps the cougar's bad reputation is based partly on its blood-curdling scream. It can't roar, but it is able to purr, a reflection of maternal contentment. Already the brains and bodies of the kittens stir with age-old instincts. Play is very much a part of nature's plan. It teaches the baby animals what their teeth and claws, their muscles and balance are all about. It teaches all baby animals to be a part of a group or loners like these cougars. It teaches them to hunt or to escape the hunt. It teaches them the rituals they'll need to someday carry on their species. And at the heart of all this teaching, is the mother. The wild mother's patience and bond with her young is like nothing else in nature. In some species, fathers also teach. See what's under it? Yeah. What is it? Tigers. No, not tigers. Cougars. Yeah. Cougars. Look, it's a mom and her three babies. They're really cute, too. As the wild babies grow and learn, we should remember why we need them on the planet. The reason is clear. 
for all species, including our own. They help make life worthwhile. I'm Marty Stauffer. Until next time, enjoy our wild America.